Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV, where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is pasta bakes. I'm Beth, and I'm joined by Katie and Elizabeth to tell us about the recipes. So, Elizabeth, tell us about your pasta bakes recipe. Okay, you know, I feel like I really bungled this one, I have to say, because I love a pasta bake. You guys know I love pasta, and I think I should have just gone more ambitious with it and done something really, like, a lot more interesting. But instead, I just made this, like, bland pasta bake that I'm never going to make again. So I'll, I'll share it with you guys. So it was from New York Times Cooking, and it was super easy. And, like, it did, I guess it wasn't bad, you know? It was just, like, so uninteresting. So um, basically, this was kind of odd. You were supposed to get a 28 ounce can of like whole or diced tomatoes, but then puree them in your food processor. So I was like, no. So I just got a 20 ounce can, 28 ounce can of pureed tomatoes. <laughs> but anyway, so you, you dice a yellow bell pepper, you saute it in olive oil with a couple cloves of minced garlic. Um, and then some, red pepper flakes and some thyme and some fresh chopped basil. I also threw in a shallot just because I had it. Um, you add in this, the, the 28, 20, 28 ounces of tomato puree, a little bit more olive oil, salt, pepper, kind of let that simmer a bit. In the meantime, you've baked rigatoni or not baked, sorry, boiled rigatoni drained it. Then you grate, it called for three ounces of Gruyere cheese. I probably did like more like five because um, I just got a little block and I was like, I don't know, what, what, whatever, I'm just going to use this up. Um, and you basically add the pasta, the sauce and the Gruyere to a big bowl, stir it all together, put it in a, a like lightly coated baking dish and put it in the oven for 30 minutes. Oh, oh, I did forget one thing. It called for Kalamata olives, which I think is why I like gravitated towards it because I love olives. So it was just like kind of a poorly written, written recipe too, because it called for like a third of a cup of Kalamata olives, which is like, can you picture that's like nothing, right? So I just got a jar and just did the whole thing because I was like, it's like nothing. So that was good. So you put it in the oven for 30 minutes. It comes out. It's baked. It's pretty good. Um, but it was just like, so. it was just not, it was just uninteresting to me. The flavors were pretty basic. The olives were nice. I do like olives. Um, I was reading some of the comments and like people had kind of like plussed it up or whatever you want to call it um, by like, adding some spinach for more greens. Um, I thought it might've been good if I put like fresh mozzarella on top and that would have gotten maybe kind of like bubbly and stuff. It, like the, the cheese content was like too low for me. The veggie content was also kind of too low. It was just ended up being like very pasta heavy. Um, I have a photo here of it out of the oven. I sprinkled some additional fresh basil on top. And like, it was just, it was totally fine. It was easy. It was not, you know, a crime, but I just, I just feel like I could have done a lot better. And, um, the recipe also the way, like I, the modifications I made, I thought were good. So I don't think this was a very well-written recipe in terms of quantities either. Um, so just a comment on that, but you know, I don't know, especially if you have kids, it might be a good weeknight dinner. Cause it was super easy to throw together a little bit of veg in there. Like it just, it tasted like, like what I used to get from like Sabaro when my family would, would have to stop on a road trip. It's just like a baked red pasta dish. So anyway, not the strongest start to our episode, but that is what I did. 
Well, it's a little surprising that it wasn't such a great recipe coming from the New York Times to me, because I always think their recipes are quality. So it goes just goes to show, I guess, that they're not everybody is perfect and um, that I guess sometimes you do need to make modifications just to make it more suited to you. I'm glad you put more olives in. That sounds really good. And I can understand why you would be attracted to the recipe because of that. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds good in theory. Um, and you know, you'll find out about mine too, which, <laughs> well. but anyway, um, I, but you're right though, with, for kids, uh, with, you know, sometimes they don't want anything, you know, bland is a little better. So yeah. whatever, but you did what you did. And now we know, you just, now we know. And I think also it was a good base, but I think, with like, mo it was a good base for like modifications. So yeah. that's kind of cool. Like if you wanted to throw some zucchini in there, or like I said, the mozzarella, that was kind of nice. Cause you're like, you have this simple bake that you could then make better, but little did I know I would need to do that. So anyway, I do like the idea of putting uh fresh mozz on it because then it gets nice and melty and it's real easy to just stick on there. So yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for sharing. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. All right, Katie, maybe you had a little bit uh, more success. Okay, a little bit, but I will tell you my recipe is very similar to yours. So this recipe is for baked pesto rigatoni. Um, I did take this recipe from pinchofyum.com and I adapted it. I have a note here that I adapted. I can't remember exactly what I changed, but I do know that I looked at it and was like, okay, well, this needs to go and... So I changed it a little bit, um, but basically, you know, what you do is you just uh, bring a large pot of water to a boil. While that's boiling, you chop about three cups of tomatoes. Uh, then you add your rigatoni to the water, cook it according to the package. While that's cooking, then you make your pesto. And I did actually really like this version of pesto because not only does it call for two cups of basil, it also calls for two cups of spinach. So you get that little bit of extra veg in there, but you also kind of tone down that basil flavor that might be like a little strong if you're using four full cups of basil. So I really liked that about this recipe. So it's the two cups of spinach, two cups of basil, some walnuts, olive oil, shredded Parmesan, salt, and then a whole bunch of garlic cloves all in your food processor till it's smooth um, and you end up with about two heaping cups of pesto. Um, so then you preheat your oven and you take your cooked rigatoni and mix it in a bowl with your chopped tomatoes and your pesto. I do have a picture that I took of this, not because it was all that beautiful, but it just wanted to remind myself that you could eat this like right there right you could stop at this point and eat a delicious pasta with pesto and tomatoes and cheese on it and it would be wonderful but since we're baking pasta for this episode you uh transfer it to a baking dish and i sprinkled mine with uh, a blend of asiago and mozzarella cheese all over the top uh, cover it with aluminum foil, bake it for about 15 minutes, uncover and broil it for a couple minutes till it gets nice and brown on top. Um, I did really like this. It was very simple, um, but it was really good. And it was, it was really excellent lunch leftovers. So I ate this like all for the rest of the week. And it was really, it was great. It was so simple. I don't know how often I'll make this again, but I think it'll come to mind when I'm like, oh my gosh, I have way too much basil and tomatoes in my garden. I could see definitely pulling it out for that. Um, but yeah, it was pretty basic. <laughs> no, I mean, it sounds great. And sometimes you do have to just make pesto to use stuff up. And I think it's just like one way to do that. And I do, I do feel like baked pasta makes excellent leftovers. And that is a nice like facet of it because sometimes the fresh pasta, I feel like if there's fresh veggies in it, they don't keep as well in the fridge, but like the baking kind of makes it all better a little bit. So that's nice. Excellent tip. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know that you like to make your pesto with walnuts. Did this recipe call for it too? Or that's just um, how you do it? 
Yeah, I can't remember exactly, but it's likely that I that was one of the adaptations that I made because I do generally make mine with um, walnuts mm. to not have to buy all those pine nuts. Even do you put yeah. lemon juice in your pesto, Katie? I don't. Okay, I was just curious. I don't normally either, but I have seen it. I probably have tried it, but it's not my go-to way. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, Beth, tell us about your pasta bake. All right. I went into this planning because I wanted to make one of those no boil pasta bakes. Are you familiar with it? Where you put it all in a dish? I mean, in a baking pan. So I, and I was looking, I'd been looking for recipes. Most of them were with red sauce, but then I found this one that it was a no boil lemon parm, parm pasta. So I was like, okay, that sounds good. Um, so I got it from a, a website, Greens and Chocolate. Now I, I'm going to just go back to my recipe. It's a uh, real simple, yeah, it's greens and the letter N, chocolate.com. Uh, so also has cream cheese. So there you go. I was like, hmm, ding, ding. So um, cream cheese, Parmesan cheese, olive oil. It had uh, eight ounces of half and half, two and a half cups of chicken or veggie broth, a cup of frozen peas, some garlic, lemons, and then a whole uh, zest of one lemon, salt and pepper. And um, so you put all of that into the a nine by 13 and you cover it with foil uh, for 30 minutes. You kind of stir it, but the the cream cheese is solid, you know? Um, uh, so after 30 minutes, the cream cheese breaks up. So you, you uh, mix that up. And then you cover again and bake for 20 minutes. I think I did end up baking it for 25. Top with fresh basil. You know, I had the time while it was baking to go pick the basil in my, in my garden, but you know, I did not. Um, and I regret that because it needed it. Uh, I do have a photo of the process, like before I put it in the oven and then after it was, it was good. It was good. It wasn't fantastic. Um, it was for me, it was good to know that you can make it that way, like without a stovetop. And one of the notes said, it's really better to always boil your your pasta because uh, it had a little I don't know just the texture wasn't quite the same but but it made fine leftovers um I had uh I had it last night so it was um it's easy to just microwave but then I was looking over the uh, the recipe and she was talking about well if you microwave it add a little milk to it I di it didn't need that um it was creamy it was it was good it was it was good good you know but um would I make it again hard to say probably probably not you know I, you could just throw all the wet stuff in well on a stovetop this is what you could do uh that's probably so yeah I might I might but I don't know and, and one other thing the lemon zest alone just didn't really put it over the edge of lemony so I uh, but uh, good to know that you can well, make it happen. What kind of pasta did you use? Oh, I use penne. Okay, oh, and you just pasta. threw it in dry to yeah. the well did the, of that. Did the liquid get mostly absorbed, and it just kind of stayed like a sauce? It did, but I mean, when it first came out, I let it sit for about five minutes, and I kept stirring it and stirring it, and. Okay. Um, but by the time we'd finished it, uh, when I re remembered that basil needed to go on it, the, um, uh, it was, it was fine. It was solid. It was, and for leftovers, it was, you know, thick and rich. That's so, fascinating. Yeah. I've never done that yeah. week. And I, I've always kind of doubted it would work. And I'm like, I don't want to like risk it because I don't want to like have like no dinner and like ruined ingredients. But well, it's good to know yeah. that it does cook and, you know, it's right. together. So, I mean, I, I was a little concerned, like, as we were, because it was 
you know, after seven o'clock and I'm like, I'm hungry. And what if it doesn't work? Sure. I'm going to order pizza, <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. uh, but it did. And plus having the peas in it, I felt like it was all, you know, enough of a, a meal for us at that point that I didn't need to make anything else. So yeah. good time was had by all. Uh, so yeah, those are, those are good ones. So, and I'm just going to close this out by saying, Thank you for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on AADL.org to find the recipes we talked about and share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we will be sharing dip for dinner. Hmm, wonder what I could make. We look forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe Share, Recipe Share. Share a little recipe with recipe share